It's hard to spend a day drawing every child's face, you know, marching down a barbed wire corridor towards their doom. It's sad, you know, like when they enter, you sort of, they're like a challenge, how am I gonna draw them? And then as you draw them, you get to know them and you start to notice all of these really minute things like, you know, that one shot of the girls being force marched and it's winter, everybody's dressed like in winter coats. And as they sort of come into focus, you realize that none of these little girls have shoes on. It really tears your heart out. The first thing you do is pick where you want someone's eye to go to. With little techniques like the lighting and the degree of detail that you put into a thing, you can really control where your eye goes on, on, the, on the screen. I mean, it's sort of the opposite of softening it, really. It's like you distill the emotion out of it and then represent it with the distractions removed. It's sort of like the submarine of animation, you know? Everything is like conveniently within an arm's length. Uh, colored pencils, paint. Um, this is the rotoscope stand, so this is the projector which projects the image down onto the paper. So this is where the drawing happens. I like to keep the markers here, brushes there, watercolor there. So I've got all these pastels, you know, right at my fingertips. It's all just physical, mechanical painting, which is both the fun and the, um, you know, gives it that look. It's, it's sort of indisputably handmade. I, I think that there's an emotion in the color. You know, mostly it's what's going to look good, what's going to look authentic. It's also it reflects the mood of the piece. The watercolor tends to be a little heavier. The pastel is more joyous. So for a scene, you know, more towards liberation or before the Nazis, we would try to keep it as light as possible. And then as, as, as the lights go out of the Holocaust, like literally the, the, the color disappears. It starts in full color and then the colors, each shot progressively, we drop some of the colors. So it gets down to really just the flesh tone and grays. As the rest of the color in the world disappears, the skin tone of the people becomes more poignant. You really feel like the, that they're people, individuals that are lost adrift in this, this, this nightmare. This is the sound I hear in my sleep. <laughs> Coleman is now photographing the finished artwork. The sequence is made up of, I think it's 78 drawings. So each drawing is photographed separately. She slides it onto these pegs. It's an Acme peg bar. And so it always is locked in the same registration. Sometimes I'll pause to check in to see how it looks. Um, but while capturing it, usually I don't notice the movement. So it's all a surprise at the end once it's exported and then you look at it, then that's where you really see the movement. Um, I think this is all the second half. So this shot was designed to run backwards, so I had to paint it forward. So I started with the numbers, just painting these tiny little, these tattooed numbers. Um, and then I painted in the rest of the characters, these two boys. And the idea was that the shot would run in reverse so that you start with the boys and they're very human and real and they disappear and all that's left is the numbers. So it starts with her, and then each person appears one at a time. You know, the idea of painting them on in that way, in that particular shot, it, it, it makes the statement with the one person that's at its strongest. And then it gets amplified even more by, by the other people. And then having the context bleed on and realizing like, oh my gosh, this is a city street, like, like one that I could live on. By withholding and revealing in that sequence, I think it, it, 
it almost insists on that, that arc of response. You know, when you look at the old footage, it's very easy to say, oh, that was another time, that could never happen here. But animating it takes it out of that oldness and makes it, you know, sort of crafted with passion. It's like, it's other, it's, it becomes timeless and, and it becomes more immediate. This is grown-up stuff. And, and why hide it from children? They should know. You know, it, and, and to present it in a way that is human and, and disturbing, but, you know, it's real. We live in a disturbing time. And to hide it seems dishonest. <laughs>